Welcome to this journey with Pastor George and Floyd, where through preaching and teaching, you will experience the uncompromised Word of God. Through this journey, some will experience an increase in faith, while others will see deliverance through God's undeniable truth. Truth for the spirit, the soul, and the body. Now, without further ado, please help me welcome the host of our broadcast, Pastor George M. Floyd. Well, praise the Lord. We're back once again at Word of the Truth Ministries. Uh, this evening, we're going to be uh, talking about uh, the importance of being born again uh, in order for every individual to enter into the kingdom of God. But first of all, let's go to the Lord in prayer and invite the person of the Holy Spirit to come in and to teach us tonight. But I'm not the real teacher. Uh, it is the person, the Holy Spirit, that resides and lives on the inside of me uh, that will be teaching uh, you tonight. Father, we just thank you and we love you. Uh, we bless you for all that you've done for us. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor uh, for what you've done and what you're going to do. We pray tonight. Uh, Father, that you would just uh, come down, Lord God, and anoint us from on high, give us an understanding tonight uh, of your word. We pray for the anointing of our ears that we will be able to hear, uh, the anointing of our heart that we will be able to receive, and the anointing of our mind that we will be able to understand. Now, Father, be with us tonight. Give us your word from your word. It's in your name we pray, God. We love you and thank you. Anyone out in the in television world say amen, 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 amen. We're going to be talking, as I said earlier, about being born. What does it mean to be born again? Uh, you know, when you study the scriptures, the only place really uh, that Jesus uh, talked about uh, being born again was when uh, he and uh, a Pharisee uh, by the name of Nicodemus uh, had a uh, conversation. And the Bible teaches us that he came uh, to Jesus by night. And, you know, when I, when, when I read that, I often thought about, uh, how, uh, many of us, when we come to God, we come in, we come to him in our dark times. We come to him in our, the night seasons of our life. And Nicodemus may have come to him, uh, uh at night because he may have been afraid of his, of the Romans. He may have, he may have been afraid of the, the Pharisees. He may be, he may have been afraid of the Jews. We don't really know why he came by night, but the Bible says he came to him uh, by, by night. And he he, he questioned Jesus uh, on a few things. Uh, and as we read this in, in uh, the Gospel according to St. John chapter 3, we're going to go from being born again to entering into, entering into the kingdom. Because the Bible teaches us that none of us can enter uh, the kingdom of God without being born the second time. You've got to be born twice if you're going to enter the kingdom of God forever. You got you can't be born one time because all of us, if we're in this natural world, we've been born once. And that natural birthing uh, does not prepare us or does not allow us to enter into the kingdom of God. In order to enjoy uh, the eternal glory of God, uh, in order to enjoy heaven, in order to be, uh, to live in the very presence of God forever, Jesus says that you've got to be born again. You've got to be born twice. If you've been born once, you cannot enter the kingdom. You've got to be born twice. And there is a, there is two birthings that, uh, that human beings and only human beings can experience. Uh, the first birthing is when they're born from the mother's womb. And the second birthing is when they've been born from above. There's a difference. One is a natural birthing and one is a supernatural birthing. One is from the mother's womb. The other is from above. But let's read from, from uh, St. John chapter 3. Uh, seems like it's, very, very, it's a very clear uh, teaching on this. But a lot of people don't take time to really study what does it mean 
uh, to be born again. Listen to what it says in the gospel according uh, to St. John uh, chapter 3. Uh, John writes this, and, and I'm very glad I'm glad that he wrote it because now I can have an understanding of the conversation that he had uh, with, the, with the master and with the greatest teacher the world's ever known. Listen to what it says in uh, the gospel according to St. John chapter 3. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees. So we know that this is not a, a, a mere story. Uh, this is Jesus telling the story. And, and John writing, John said, uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher that come from God. You see, the, the Pharisees knew who Jesus was. They didn't have any, uh, any doubts about who he was because of the great miracles that, that he, he was performing and, and the way that he taught. Uh, they knew that he wasn't an ordinary man. They knew that he was a man that was sent from God. That's what Nicodemus says here. He said, we know who, who you are. Uh, we know that you're from God. He says, for no man uh, can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Uh, if they didn't believe that he was from God, they, they knew that just because of his work, just because of the things that he was doing, they had to admit that he was from God because of the great miracles uh, that he was performing. Because no man could do these miracles without without him knowing God or, be, or, come, or being come from God. Uh, he said, "We know that our teacher come from God." Said, "No man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him." But let's do what Jesus said. Je Jesus, to me, sort of goes off the subject uh, when, when when he began to talk to Nicodemus. He sort of goes off. Nicodemus doesn't ask him, him a question. Jesus seemingly just goes off into a whole nother, a whole nother direction. And I believe that that Christ was actually reading the mind of Nicodemus, because the Bible says that Christ read their minds. The uh, the Bible says that he knew their thoughts. Isn't it awesome to know that 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 Jesus, the, the, the Son, the Almighty God, when, when when he would turn around and talk to these guys, he knew what they were thinking. Bible said he knew their thoughts. But this is what Jesus says to Nicodemus after Nicodemus makes this statement. Nicodemus said, oh, we know that you are that you are a great man and we know that you come from God because no man can do these miracles uh, except God be with him. That's verse, verse 2 of chapter 3 of St. John. But this is what Jesus says. Jesus seemingly goes off into a whole other direction. Jesus answered and says unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again. Now Nicodemus was praising him and giving him kudos on his great miracles. But I think that Jesus read his mind. Jesus, he said, Jesus answered and said unto, unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And when you study the Bible, there, there, there are words that sort of jump out at you uh, as, as you study the Bible. And when I was ministering years ago uh, on this particular uh, chapter and, and verse, there was a word that jumped out at me as, as I was reading it. And the word is see, S-E-E. -E. This is what Jesus says. I'm going to read it again. Jesus said, verily, verily, I truly, truly, I say unto, unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, I've, I've, I've been saved over 40 years, but I've never seen the kingdom of God. So what is, what is Jesus actually saying here? Is he saying that, that we're going to be able to, once we're born again, we're going to be able to, to see the kingdom as we see the kingdoms in the world? You know, there are a lot of kingdoms in the world. That's Russia, that's, that's a kingdom, culture. Uh, America, that's a kingdom, a culture. The Japanese folk, that's a kingdom and a culture. But, you know, we can see those kingdoms. But Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. So the, the word here, as you study this word see in the Hebrew, it actually means, the word see means to understand. Now, now let's go back and read it again and, 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 let, and, let, and let's change, sort of change the wording. Not really change the word, but sort of change the meaning here. This is what it says. It says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot understand the kingdom of God. And see, the only way you're going to be able to understand, the only way you're going to be able to see the kingdom of God, and you see, the word see here means to understand. 
you don't have to see something with your natural eye in order to actually see it. You can understand it. And the understanding is actually better than the sight. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying, except a man be born again, he cannot understand the kingdom of God. The reason people in the world today, uh, many of the different religions in the world, they don't understand Christians because they can't see or they can't understand the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God is all about. I believe that, 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 that knowledge is something that allows you to see and understand what the kingdom of God is all about. Now, I can take a plane and go to Hawaii and, and you know, and, and I can see Hawaii. I can see Hawaii. But I'm in Gastonia right now. And, you know, I can see pictures about Hawaii. I can look, look at movies about Hawaii. But to really get a real clear understanding of Hawaii and what Hawaii is really all about, uh, I have to go to Hawaii. And, and the reason I use Hawaii is because I heard Hawaii was, was a beautiful place. Now, you, we could talk about Hawaii, but until we go to Hawaii, we can really not understand how Hawaii really looks, how beautiful it is. I heard it is a beautiful place. I heard you see rainbows every day in Hawaii. I heard it rains about every day, every other day, you know, so God can water the beautiful flowers and vegetation. But you know, right now, I'm in gas Sorry, and I really can't see Hawaii unless I look at books, unless I look at movies, and then I can see Hawaii. But while I'm in gas Sorry, I really can't see, uh, I can't really see Hawaii. The kingdom of heaven is the same way. The kingdom of heaven is out there in God's created universe, but I can't see it right now. But one day, when God gives me my new corruptible body, and I, I can take a plane, and I can fly to Hawaii, and I can see exactly what the books are trying to show me and trying to tell me, I can see Hawaii. The kingdom of God is the same way. The kingdom of God is just as real as Hawaii is. The kingdom of God is just as real as Gaston is. The kingdom of God is just as real as Charlotte is. But in order to really understand it, you got to go there. And one day God is going to come, he's going to come and get us and he's going to take us to the kingdom. He's going to show us what the kingdom of God uh, is all about. But in, in, in order for you to, to go there and to be there, uh, Jesus says, uh, you got to be born again. Because the kingdom of God or the place of the kingdom uh, is not a place where unsaved people go. Because it's not a place for unsaved people. It's a place for people uh, that have been born again. And Jesus said, that said the man be born again, he cannot see or he cannot understand the kingdom of God. You know, there's a big problem in the world today with, with different religions. And, and all the religions of the world, not, none of the religions of the world have what the Christian has. We have something on the inside of us that other religious people don't have. James says that there is only one true and undefiled religion, that's Christianity. It is the only religion that will, that, that, that will allow us to enter into the kingdom of God. We cannot see the kingdom of God. We cannot understand the kingdom of God without being born again twice. And the kingdom of God is real. But this is what Nicodemus says. Nicodemus says unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's a question that, that many of you probably are asking. If a person is born again, uh, does he have to go back uh, into his uh, mother's womb uh, in order to be born the second time? No. Uh, the Bible lets us know that uh, you don't have to enter back into your mother's womb uh, to be born the second time, but you've got to come from your mother's womb to be born the first time. And Jesus lets us know that this birthing, this new birthing that I'm talking about, is nothing like the first birth. The first birthing comes from the womb of the woman. But the second birthing, we are, the Bible says that we are born from above. There is a transformation. There is something that happens on the inside of us when we trust and we believe in Jesus, when we, are, uh, we put all of our faith and all of our trust and we believe in what he's done. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes over there in, in, in Romans, and I think it's in chapter 10, verse 19, I'll say, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe, and if you have believed in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, for, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, the way that this second birthing takes place, it is through an act of faith. 
It is through trusting and believing in what Jesus has done. And when we trust and believe what Jesus has done on Calvary, we believe they, that they, they died on Calvary, that he was placed into him, he was raised the third day. All these things are prerequisites for, for the transformation that can happen on the inside of everybody that will believe in Jesus. Jesus Christ is God, and Jesus Christ came into the world that he might die for the sins of man. And when you trust and believe in that, then the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of us, and he transforms us, and he makes us, he gets us ready uh, to enter into uh, the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus says unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Uh, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be, and be born? But listen to the answer that Jesus gives us. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Jesus says, if you've been born one time, you've been born of the flesh. But it says, he says, marvel not that I say unto you that you got to be born again. You got to, you got, there has to be a transforming power that comes into your life and transforms your spirit. Jesus says, except until that happens, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus answered and, and said unto him, except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he could not enter into the kingdom of God. There is a kingdom that God has prepared uh, for you and for me. For every human being, God has prepared a place in the heavens. Because the Bible says that it is appointed unto every man once to die and after that the judgment. So all of us are going to go by the way of the grave one day. All of us are going to eventually sleep or die, one or the other. We're going to sleep or die. And if you've been born again by the Spirit of God, if you've been born the second time by trusting and believing in Jesus, that's what new birth is all about. If you trust and believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you've accepted him as your Lord and as your Savior, you believe in the death and resurrection of Christ, then the Bible says that the Holy Spirit uh, will come into you and he will transform uh, your spirit and, uh, and awaken your spirit and quicken your spirit and you can experience uh, what, uh, what we're talking about, uh, the, the, the new birth experience. This is what he's saying. Ver, uh, uh, verse 6 of that third chapter, Jesus says, and this is Jesus talking, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's all it is. It's just flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, uh, ye must be born again. Jesus said, you've got to be born from above. You've got to be born the second time. He said, the wind bloweth where it listed, and thou know it, and here's the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence, thou, whence it cometh, whence it goeth. Uh, and so is everyone that is born uh, of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, art thou a master of Israel and knowest uh, not these things? He says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak the things we know and testify the things we've seen and we receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, uh, how shall we believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So Jesus is talking about being born again in order to enter into a whole nother kingdom. The only way that, that you are going to go to heaven uh, if, you, if you've never been born again, uh, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. The only way you're going to be able to enter the kingdom of heaven, you've got to be born again by the Spirit of God. There is a kingdom that God has for all of us. One is the kingdom of light. The other is the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of light is the kingdom that we enter into when we're born again, when we're born the second time. If you've only been born once, uh, you will enter when you die or when you sleep or when you die, when you die, you're going to enter into the kingdom of darkness. There are only two kingdoms. There's not three kingdoms, but there's only two kingdoms. 
If you are born once, you will enter, you will, will you will eternally live in a kingdom of darkness. But if you've been born twice, the Bible says that we are going to enter into a whole other kingdom, and this kingdom will be ruled by a king whose name is Jesus. Jesus talked about the kingdom more than he talked about anything. It seems like today in the church, we talk more about being sanctified and being filled with the Holy Spirit or being born again. Most of us never talk about the kingdom. But Jesus talked about the kingdom more than he talked about anything. And I, I'm a firm believer that that's what we're supposed to be talking about. Instead of talking about uh, politics, instead of talking about the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, independent body. The thing that we're to be talking about as believers, we are supposed to be introducing and talking to people about the kingdom of God. Because if we talk to people about the kingdom of God, it would do away with all of this other stuff that we've been talking about. Just if, if whatever Jesus talked about, I believe, is more important than what our politicians talk about. Because the kingdom of heaven is an eternal kingdom. It's not just a temporal kingdom. But it is an eternal kingdom. If you notice, when Jesus was standing before Pilate, but let me rephrase that. When Pilate was standing before Jesus, because Pilate didn't, Pilate, Pilate didn't realize that he was standing before the God of the earth. He was standing before the God of creation. And he thought he had the power uh, to take Jesus' life or, or to set him free. But do you know that Jesus... Uh, Jesus told him, Jesus said, listen, listen, Pilate, you wouldn't have any power over me at all except to be given you from above from my father. You would have no power over me at all. And Nicodemus began to talk to Jesus about uh, kingdom. And uh, Jesus began to talk about his kingdom. Let's go over there to the, the gospel according to uh, the gospel according to, I think it's St. John. Uh, St. John chapter, I think it's 18. Let's go over to St. John chapter 18. And let's get into the conversation of Jesus and, uh, and Pilate. They talked about uh, uh, the kingdoms of this, of this world. Listen, uh, Pilate, Pilate was talking to Jesus, and, and, and Pilate told Jesus, he said, listen, uh, Jesus said, Pilate, you wouldn't have uh, uh, no power over me at all except to be given you uh, from above. Let's go over here and see what, what this is found. It's in uh, yeah, the Gospel according to St. John. I'm, well, I won't, we don't put on the glass, but I guess we're going to have to. I'll go over here to the Gospel of St. John chapter 18. Let's turn there if you have your Bible. Because the only way we're going to really be able to understand the word of God, we've got to have a Bible. We've got to have a Bible. We've got to have, we're going to understand uh, the word of God. This is what it says in, uh, this is what it says in St. John uh, chapter 18. Uh, read, began reading at verse 33. This is what it says. It says, Then Pilate entered into his judgment hall again and called Jesus and said to him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of thee? Now, Pilate is supposed to be questioning and trying Jesus, but, but in actuality, Jesus is questioning and, and, and testing and trying on Pilate. Jesus asked him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it, uh, tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered. This is what he says. Jesus says that my kingdom is not of this world. So in other words, just as we have different kingdoms in the world, we have, we've, got, we've got a lot of kingdoms. We have the, uh, the United States is a kingdom. Uh, Russia is a kingdom. As a matter of fact, let, let me tell you this before I go there. All kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world uh, were a product of the kingdom of God. Every kingdom in the world actually came out of the kingdom 
of God. Because the Bible said that God is the one that sets up kings, and he's the one that takes down kings over there in Romans chapter 13. But Jesus, Jesus uh, tells Pilate, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So Jesus is saying that he can, just as there are kingdoms in the world, Jesus said, I came from a kingdom. But my kingdom is not like all these kingdoms that's on the earth. My kingdom is completely different from all of the kingdoms of the world. We've got hundreds of kingdoms on the earth. And every kingdom on the earth, most of them are basically the same. You say, well, Pastor Floyd, what makes up a kingdom? Well, first of all, you got to have a king. Every kingdom has a leader. You might call them potentates. You might call them dictators. You might call them presidents. You might call them lords. You might call them kings. But every kingdom has a leader. Uh, the king of, of, of Russia is Putin. Uh, the king of the United States right now is, is Donald Trump. We've got kings of kingdoms all over the world. Not only the, the, in, in order to make up a kingdom, uh, you have about 12 or 15 different components of a kingdom. Uh, you got to have a king, number one. Uh, number two, you got to have land. Uh, number three, you got to have subjects. You got to have people under you. Uh, you got to have a constitution. Uh, you got to have laws. You got to have an education system. You got to have a monetary system. You got to have a language. So a kingdom uh, is comprised of many different parts. And every kingdom in the world is comprised of these different components, of these different parts. Well, the kingdom of heaven is the same way. Those of us who've been born again, we are a part of the kingdom of heaven. And what in actuality, we really have dual citizenship because we've been born twice. If you've been born once and you live in America, uh, you are part of the of that earthy kingdom. But if you've been born again, you have a dual citizenship and you are part of two kingdoms. You are part of the kingdom of the earth and you are part of the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus was talking to Pilate uh, about the kingdoms of this world. And the Bible says, that there's coming a time when, when the king of the universe, whose name is Jesus, that one day the king of the universe uh, is going to come back to the earth. And Jesus Christ, listen, Jesus told the disciples, listen, he said, if I go away, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. That's the rapture. And where I am, that you may be also. In other words, Jesus said, I'm going to come back to the earth and I'm going to take you out of the earth, and I'm going to take you to my kingdom. Isn't that good to know that one day Jesus is coming uh, to take you out of this world and take you back to his kingdom? Because if you can remember what Jesus said, Jesus asked, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. Listen, he said, if my kingdom was of this world, he said, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from hence. In other words, that there is a kingdom. There is a kingdom that's coming to the earth. As a matter of fact, when you studied the Bible, the Bible teaches us that one day Jesus Christ is coming back. Let's go over there to the book of Revelation. I think it's Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. And it talks about how Jesus Christ one day is going to come back and all of the kingdoms of the world is going to be given over to him. All the kingdoms of the world. Listen to what Revelation 11 and 15 says. It says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms, this is what it said, the kingdoms, not just one kingdom. He said, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever. In other words, Jesus Christ is coming back to rule and reign as a king. And he's coming back to rule and reign as a king forever. Let's go over to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2 uh, talks about uh, this kingdom. See if I can find it right quick. Daniel chapter 2. This is very important. Daniel chapter 2. But there, but, but there are the verse that says that one day uh, that the God of heaven is going to set up 
a kingdom on this earth, and Christ is going to rule and reign over all uh, the kingdoms of the world. Folks, we just read that over there in, in, in the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 11 and 15. It says that, that, that all the kingdoms of the world are, are going to be given over uh, to Christ, uh, and he's going to be uh, the ruler of all the kingdoms of the world, and the Bible says of his kingdom, uh, there uh, shall be no end. Uh, in the book of Zechariah, the book of Zechariah says that when Christ is going to set his, set his feet upon the Mount of Olives, and he and he is going to rule over all the kingdoms of the world, over all the kingdoms uh, that are on uh, the earth. I wanted to find that verse over there in the book of, in the book of Daniel for you, because it's a very important part, very important uh, scripture for us. Here it is. It's, it's uh, two and forty-four. It says. And in the days of these kings, and I believe that we're living in these days, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. In other words, God, one day God is going to send his son back to the earth. Have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about why Christ uh, ascended to heaven from the Mount of Olives in the body, the same body that was placed in the tomb of Joseph Arimathea. Uh, Christ was resurrected from the dead, and that same body that he has, he's coming back. He said, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So in order to enter the kingdom, the Bible says that you got to be born again, number one. You must be born again, and except a man be born again, he cannot understand, he cannot understand, he cannot understand the kingdom of God. If you want to understand the kingdom of God, ask Christ to come into your life, into your heart, and to make you a new creature, then and, then and only then will you be able to understand what the kingdom of God is all about. God bless you. Father, we thank you now for your word. Be with us as we go from this place, as we leave the television. And it's in your mighty name we pray. God, we love you and we thank you. Everyone out there in television world said amen. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.